Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Acheson Clare, Director of Purdue University's Center for Intercultural Learning, Mentorship, Assessment, and Research, also known as SILMAR. I'm here today to talk to you about the Hubicle, the Intercultural Learning Hub, which is a science gateway, a one-stop shop for interculturalists. And specifically, I'm going to share with you resources for global learning that you can find there. I'm going to give you a tour of several different areas of the Hubicle, but let's start with collections. A collection is a place where you can gather everything that's interesting to you, whether it's already in the Hubble or elsewhere on the web. You just pin things as if you're in Pinterest. So you can collect links, files, media, pretty much anything. Any member can create collections, but you can also follow collections that other people have made. Here's what the collections area looks like. Now, on many of the slides I'm going to show you, there's a link at the bottom or at the top, and there's also a QRC. So you can click on either one of those in order to access these areas. You will need a free account to get into the collections. You can see the red arrow there pointing to a collection that I've made for you called Global Learning. If you were to click on that Global Learning collection, the collection would open up and you'd see a number of posts that link to different items related to global learning. You're welcome to follow this collection or create something similar of your own. Here's how you do that. Back on the collections page, there's a tile called new collection with a plus mark. So you're going to click there and a wizard opens up. This is super easy to do. Basically, it just walks you through the steps of entering the information that you need to create a new collection and then to add posts. When you're finished, other people can follow you and you're also welcome to add new posts to your existing collections at any time. Before we get too much further, I want to tell you about tags, because tags are such a useful function to find things on a theme. You can search for related content no matter where it lives on the Hubble using tags. You can access the tag search either with the link at the bottom, the QRC at the top, or if from inside the Hubble, if you go to the Discover menu at the very top of the screen, one of your options in that menu is called tags. Once you're in the tags page, you can click on any of the tags under recently used or top used or type in a tag to search in the bar above. Let's say you search for a global learning tag. When I ran this search, 17 things popped up in that list. Most of them are in my collection, but some of them may live elsewhere on the hub. Tags can really take you down a rabbit hole of exploration inside the Hubble because if I click on any one of these things in my list of 17, it will have multiple tags. I can click on global learning, it'll take me back here. But if I click on any of the other tags, it will produce another list of related tools. I can click on a different tag from there and explore a separate set of related tools. You can create your own tags. If you're just searching, it's really not very helpful. But if you're creating content, which I very much encourage you to do, you could make new tags and that makes it easier for other people to find the things that you're putting into the Hubble. So what are some of those things that you might contribute to the Intercultural Learning Hub? Well, one of them is tools. We have a fantastic toolbox. It's my favorite area of the Hubble, and it's the most visited area of the Hubble as well. It's a huge archive of activities, media, assessments, all kinds of things. About 650 tools so far and growing every day. The toolbox is curated, which means that it's searchable because there's all sorts of information there for each tool. What you see here is a list on the right hand side of all the tools in the toolbox alphabetized for you. And then on the left, you see a library style search bar. You can search by many different parameters, learning outcomes, type of tool, teaching constraints. For example, if you're teaching online, I would choose no in answer to the kinesthetic question, and that will narrow your options to things that are more likely to work well online. So if you clicked on any of the tools in that list, it would pop up more information about that particular tool. You've got some key details across the top, like the size of group that you might want to split students into, how long it lasts, whether or not it costs money, the citation for the tool, the tags are listed there in yellow. And then across the bottom are a whole bunch of tabs that reveal additional information. Here's another example of a tool related to global learning. Let's take a quick look at those tabs. You've got learning objectives, and those are written sort of Bloom's taxonomy style to let you know what's the point of this activity, why even do it, right? Then you've got downloads, which provides materials that you can download for yourself, links that take you elsewhere on the internet, and lots of other information about each activity. 
So there are not just individual activities and assessments in the toolbox, there's also whole curricula and programs of study. This is an example of one that would take about eight hours, is free to use, and is linked from the Hubbacle. When tabs are grayed out, that means that information is missing there. So we know that there are, are no related tools linked here and no reviews. The Hubbacle Toolbox also curates media and texts. So if you're looking for movie clips, articles, books, podcasts, or any other type of media, you can limit your search to that. Notice that the review is missing here as well. And what this means is that we really need your input. So when you find a tool that you're gonna use, after you use it, come back to the Hubbacle and tell us what you thought about it, what worked and what didn't, and what advice you have for others who might wanna try it out. We would love it if you would put your own activities, assessments, and other tools into the toolbox. The Hubbacle is built on a user-driven content model, so it thrives when members contribute. A toolbox is easy to contribute to with a wizard. All you have to do is click the Create a Tool button at the bottom of the left search menu bar in the toolbox. There's also a group networking area. I don't really have time to show it to you, so we're gonna move on to publications, but just a note that the group networking area does allow you to have discussions, share files, work on projects, and much more with groups. So publications, you guessed it, this is where you publish scholarly work. You can access the most recent and the most popular publications here in the publications area, again, linked from the bottom and QRC at the top. You can search publications. You can also publish your own work. So papers, presentations, media, any scholarly work. Again, there's a wizard to help you out. You click the start a new project button and it's gonna walk you through the process asking you for relevant information and to upload files. Be sure to add tags and you can also link your publications from a collection for maximum visibility. That's about all we have time for today. Feel free to reach out to me with questions at chrisac at purdue.edu. The Hubbacle once again is at hubicl.org and I hope to see you there soon.